All right. Welcome to the podcast. Thanks for taking the time to come on. Really appreciate it. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you for having me. How are you? Excellent. Excellent. Enjoying my Sunday. Um, so for my audience and the people that you know may may not be familiar with who you are, tell me a little bit about your backgrounds, how you got to where you are now, um, just a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so my name is Jasmine Willis, and uh, what I do now is I'm starting a clean beauty brand, which is really focused on a wide shade range. So shades in mind first, because a lot of the times in the world of clean beauty, we're not really focused on the shades, we're focused on the product. And, um, you know, when it comes to diversity, especially, we're, we're really thinking about our skin first, we're thinking about foundations and concealers. And, um, you know, we've got like 40 shades of those, but we don't have uh, a lot of shades in the lip category. And I still see brands, they'll market their lipsticks as, you know, the universal nude shade for everyone. And to me, that just didn't make sense because I would look at that color. And to me, I see that I'm like, that would look terrible on me. So that's kind of like how it all started. Like I would have to mix two or three different shades of lipstick just to find my right nude shade. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, it's not a huge deal that you can't find your perfect um, lipstick. But to me, it's, it's like the beauty industry is telling a certain group of people that, you know, you don't have, you don't deserve to have safe and non-toxic products. And the beauty industry already kind of had, it already kind of markets more unsafe products to people of color. So like, you know, like skin lighteners and hair relaxers, acrylic nails, all those things are usually targeted towards people deep, deeper skin tone. So that's what I'm trying to do is really focus on bringing clean products for everyone so no one feels like they're left out of the clean conversation and yeah that's kind of my um that's how I came to be awesome. and it, yeah it's like this perfect storm during like I don't know during COVID like we all had a lot of downtime to find new hobbies and projects but this has always been in the back of my mind and now that we've had more of this free time and coupled with you know Black Lives Matter movement and people are trying to share black owned brands and when I wanted to partake, I wanted to buy from black owned brands, but I didn't find, find any clean um, black owned beauty brands. So like there's nothing I could buy. So I kind of, it was like the perfect storm where I found this white space and that's kind of like where I dove right in. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, that's, that's cool. That's an awesome uh, background for your company. Um, obviously I don't really buy lipstick, but I know there's a lot of women out there with their opinion on um you know what's like in certain products and whatnot like what's in like the traditional lipstick that isn't clean and then like how is your product um you know solving that problem yeah so with there's fragrances which can people's skin can be sensitive to that but also mm -hmm. um fragrances have like phthalates and different chemicals that they don't disclose in the ingredient label so really anything can be in there when it comes to fragrances and you're putting that on your lips, obviously, and you're, that's going right into your mouth. So you're really, um, it's getting into your body really easily. And then um, there's also the pigments. So, you know, even there's some brands that use like organic pigments from like, you know, fruit trees and mm -hmm. naturally occurring pigments, but there's also um, chemicals linked in, into those. Like, you know how they say, even with the produce that you choose, like make sure you wash it, like the pesticides, same right. thing with pigments in your lip products. So organic is not always the best as well. It's best to use safe synthetics or a mix of things that us, you know the source of where it's coming from. Mm -hmm. um, that's what can be found in traditional makeup. And then in mine, um, so I think it's really important to be vegan and cruelty free. So even a lot of clean products will use beeswax. I didn't want to use any beeswax. Mm -hmm. um, just a lot of different oils, nourishing oils like and, and butters, mango butter and candelilla wax, things like that are pretty good alternatives for um, clean lip products. Nice, nice. That sounds awesome. Um, so is this the main way that uh, your company, it's Neo and Noel, right? Yes. Is the main right. way that your company is planning to differentiate itself from its competition or is there any competition that's out there that's uh, kind of doing what you're already doing? Yeah, so there's definitely, you know, all the clean brands already have lip products, but for me, none of those brands have a lip product where they have the perfect shade for my skin tone. So like I can mm -hmm. walk into a Sephora right now, I could go to the clean at Sephora section 
look for a lipstick, there would be nothing that's just, I'd, I'd have to mix them. So, and I know a lot of the brands, they don't do like an extensive shade range, like, cause it's expensive. The more colors you have, the more that your costs go up, the more inventory you need. So I get that, but the way I want to do it is I don't want to ha have so many products. I want to focus on a few products that work well and have a lot of shades that really work for people. So, mm -hmm. you know, just, just focusing on that, I think is important. And then another way we're different is through the content we put out. So for example, when I look for uh, new products to buy, I first want to see, is it going to look good on my skin tone? So I usually go to YouTube and I'll put like this brand um, swatches of this color on, you know, someone with dark skin. And then usually I can't find anybody. So I just have to like take a stab in the dark and hope that this color will look good on me. But if you look at, um, if you look up the same product, just swatches of this product and you'll see tons of people who don't have my skin tone. So those mm -hmm. people have their examples. I don't have any examples for me. So what I want to do is I really want to put YouTube videos out. I think that's a really good source for people when they're trying to find like, is this product right for me? Mm -hmm. I want to put out videos of swatches and try-ons with people on different skin tones, trying out all the colors. And so people can not feel worried before they buy the product. So um, yeah, that's another way with, with the content mm -hmm. we're putting out YouTube and Instagram and all that. Yeah, that's a really good idea. Have you put out anything in the past to kind of like test the waters and like gauge gauge engagement um, with, with your product and the reactions to it? Yeah, so, so far we just did a quick survey of some micro influencers and um, yeah, mostly micro influencers seeing, um, showing them the shades and seeing which ones they would actually use. And a lot of them, you know, I thought maybe 20 shades would be a little overwhelming for people, but you know, most of them are like, oh yeah, I would try a lot of these. And, you know, I, and I asked them, do you usually have trouble finding your right shade? What's the consistency that you would like your lipstick to be? And are there any colors that I'm missing here? We really wanted to test the waters with these micro influencers and ask them all these questions. And I got a lot of good feedback from them. And even with the shades too, you know, it, it wasn't too overwhelming for them. They mm -hmm. found colors that they like. So, you know, that, that really gave me the confidence to like keep going forward with this too. Good, good. So I know you're planning to, you know, really start launching and raising capital for the company through Kickstarter, correct? Yeah, yeah, Kickstarter. When's that coming up? You said November, right? Yeah, November 10th is our anticipated launch date. So yeah, that's about a month from now. And so yeah, in the meantime, yeah, we're just trying to get the word out and you know, um, yeah, build our content up and yeah, build a little community before that. Do you have a monetary goal that you guys are trying to, to meet or aim for? Yeah, so right now we're looking at about in the 300,000 range, which mm -hmm. is, is, is pretty basic for the amount of shades that I have. That's, you know, that's pretty basic. Mm -hmm. And that's just the bare necessities, nothing fancy, you're not, no, you know, PR kits or gifting. You know, it's just bare bones, $300,000. Sweet, sweet. So if I if I make a contribution on Kickstarter, do I get any free lipstick or or no? Yeah, so there's gonna be a couple of awards. So most of them are lipstick. So, but if you don't want that, there's also um, we're gonna have one tier that has like vegan donuts. And um, I have a friend who's a baker. She she's in the Southern California area, but we're gonna see about if we can deliver those to um, to more places other than other than just Southern California. But yeah, we've got vegan donuts um, we've got so yeah, you can if you want you can have all 20 shades and you can have a lipstick organizer and a mm. makeup bag um what else do we have yeah we have some secret rewards too that are going to drop like halfway through the the launch so nice yeah if you don't wear them you can always give them to a friend or spread <laughs> the word if, uh, if you don't wear them but yeah and then we also have a kind of like an angel investor um tier two it's the highest one where we will kind of highlight their business on our website and kind of thanking them for, for making my business happen, but also, um, you know, highlighting their business as well. Sweet, sweet. What, what market are you aiming to, to hit? It sounds like LA would be like perfect for what you're trying to do. Like, do you have a certain group of people, uh, or not, well, I guess a market per se, or a region that you focus on a little bit more while you're starting the company up, or is it just kind of all over? Yeah, I know like clean beauty and clean living. I know it gets a rap for being kind of an LA thing, like has that kind of a 
thing, but mm -hmm. I want it to be accessible to everyone. So I don't want it to just be the LA girl or the California girl. I want, I think everyone should have access to, you know, safe, clean products. And right now we're, we're going to just start by selling just on our website, but, you know, hopefully if we can get the right retailer too, I think that would really help us be a little bit more accessible to, to everyone out there. Nice. Nice. What about men's products? I know it sounds kind of weird, but I mean, a lot of men secretly, we, we care about like what we have in our chapstick or what we put on our face in terms of like a lotion or a cream or something. Is that like a okay. market in the distant future you'd be interested in? For sure. Yeah. I think there's a lot of products that, that men can benefit from too. Um, I, I, I mean, for myself, I love lip balm. So I think have, mm -hmm. making a really good clean lip balm and lip scrubs too. You know, I have my boyfriend do a, a lip scrub every week and, and mm -hmm. a face mask. So, and he Wait, enjoys it. What's a lip and scrub? I, so just like, um, it has um, a little bit of exfoliants in it and something, mm -hmm. um, yeah, a little bit of exfoliant. So you just rub it on your lips, try to get all that dead skin off. If you don't, if you're not, if you have drier lips, um, that will really help get some of the dry skin off too. Okay. But yeah, men benefit from that. And I, I mean, I skincare is another huge thing that I love too. And I, I would love to explore that um, in the future when I've kind of figured out all the operations and how to run a business on all that. Once I've kind of, you know, gotten all that down, I would love to move into skincare and yeah, creams and all face, um, face creams and facial. Yeah. All that stuff I think men can benefit from too. Yeah. I totally buy something like that because I need like a good, like face lotion or something, depending on the environments I'm in because it gets really dry and like men will never admit it, but th their lips get hella chapped their, their yeah. face. It can cause you to break out or just, you know, just, you don't have that same glow as a guy. <laughs> um, yeah, no, even in your hands too like my boyfriend's his hands get really mm -hmm. rough and dry in the winter and i think just putting a good cream on that really helps and um guys get dry hands right here too and i, I think yeah guys could really benefit from that and that's true you know now that we're talking about it, i think guys are kind of left out of the the clean conversation too we, we don't really <laughs> talk about clean products for guys so right. it's a really good yeah well guys are you know it's kind of our fault too because we're afraid to ever admit that stuff but it's, I think it's becoming more and more common nowadays where men are starting to ask those questions because they do want to look good as much as a woman does. And they also want a clean product um, or a humane product or, um, you know, something that fits their taste. So it, it's an interesting market. I think you could definitely expand into it in the future. Cause I don't know if I can wear the lipstick, but <laughs> something else for sure I could probably use. Yeah, definitely in the future. <laughs> yeah. Maybe starting off the lip balm. I think that'd be a really good idea. Yeah, I think lip balm would be a good idea. Um, how is your brand aiming to support women of color generally? Is it just through the product or do you have a different form of outreach or intercompany plans for that? Like what, what are some ideas you got? Yeah, definitely on all sides, you know, starting internally, I will and already have been kind of surrounding myself with a group diverse group of people because you need diverse um points of view around you because if not you're gonna have like you might have a blind spot you might totally miss something and you know like that's why i don't know if you know the pull up for change movement it's uh started by the founder of oma beauty and she kind of forced brands to look at internally, like how many black people do you have in your company or people of color? And a lot of people said, no, they don't have a lot of people of color in their company. And that's why like they might not come out with the right shades because they just never thought of it. They never thought that like this color would not look good on dark skin. So right. um, internally, yeah, uh, I want to surround myself with um, diverse group of people. And uh, I also, you know, obviously we're just a startup. We're, we, I don't know how successful we're going to be and how soon we're going to reach that goal. But once we are successful enough, I would love to give back to the community and um, really just, you know, because after COVID is over, I, I know people are going to, I know people are missing community and I know people I want to get together in person mm -hmm. and I would love community events, you know, however we can help, you know, whether it's like beach cleanups or, you know, we're helping, um, you know, doing food drives, things like that, where we can get the community together. Um, after all this is over, of course, I think that'd be a great way to connect with my community and just, you know, do great things together. 
yeah, there's, there's tons of ways you could connect with your community and, you know, build that ecosystem and family around the brands and, you know, what the end goal is, the mission is for that. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of, lot of cool things you can do with it for sure. Another question, cause I did, <laughs> this is the blockchain question. Um, again, I'm sure that your level of understanding of blockchain is, you know, somewhere around normal, right? Yeah, no, I, I'm not the fintech person, but I'm, I'm, that's why I'm here. Cause I, I want to learn more about it. Right. Um, so yeah, the reason why I brought it up in the questions or the question that I had for you was, you know, how would your, would your brand have interest in using blockchain to drive more inclusivity? Um, and the reason I brought that up is because blockchain does a lot of stuff, especially for financial inclusivity. Um, everything from being able to provide the 1.7 billion people in the world that don't have access to tr traditional finance, you know, the abilities to, um, bank on their own terms and control their their money and their value avoid um, hierarchical third-party systems that might discriminate against them um, having open and free voting uh, open and free fundraising for example through like icos it's like a alternative but similar option to something like kickstarter um, so there's a lot of cool things that can be done with it um, I haven't really sat down and thought about how it can be applied specifically to your company, but I know that there's a lot of ways it could be applied. And I know my audience is probably just going crazy right now. Like you should know more about this and you should be telling her exactly what she could be doing. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. 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 What, they can reach out whenever they can. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I'm always interested in how we can um, get more access to capital or, mm -hmm. you know, just get more people, um, yeah, make it more fair and equitable, equitable when it comes mm -hmm. to funding and all that. Yeah, even even with the funding aside, it, it definitely is a, a great industry for promoting um, that equality or equitability, whichever one you think is more important. Um, it's, it's a great platform for that kind of stuff. It might be a great way to boost your company in a way and help people of color women of color as well so i don't know we could talk about that at some point down the line just want to bring it up and see if it's something that maybe you're interested in because i don't think there's a lot of other companies that you know might be competitors to you that are actually doing that so it might be a good avenue yeah i will definitely look into that yeah cool cool um yeah before we wrap up what's um how can people find neo and noel um on social media or is there a website or like where should they go yeah so um we're on all social media platforms at neo and noel n-e-o and n-o-e-l uh, most active on instagram and uh, you can also check us out on our website neo and noel.com hopefully by the time this is up we'll we'll have our campaign video launched like our, our kickstarter campaign video which was a lot of fun to shoot um, and we'll have some more photos and more information on our website right now. It's just in the very preliminary pre-launch stage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Check us out on our website, Instagram, and you can always, um, DM me on, on Instagram if anyone has any questions and yeah, that's where you can find us. Sweet, sweet. Yeah. Send me all the, the handles and everything in an email. I'll definitely put it in the description and in the videos, so people can easily see it and be like, oh, there it is. Woo. Um, Awesome. Jasmine, thanks for taking the time to you know talk about your company and everything that's coming up. It's very exciting. Um, look forward to helping you out and getting some lipstick and <laughs> um, helping promote you. <laughs> yeah, thank you for um, taking the time to talk to me. I know your audience might not be super into beauty, but hopefully maybe they connected on the business side of things, mm -hmm. or maybe they might know somebody who's who's into it. They they could buy lipstick for a friend or or their loved ones or something. So, mm -hmm. yeah, thank you for for taking the time to talk to me. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Have a wonderful Sunday and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye.